Hello, hello. Welcome to Preparing to Survive and Thrive Homesteading Channel with Charlie B. Um, today, what's for dinner? That seems to be the question every evening. Actually, I start asking it in the morning so I can thaw out something or pick up something that I might need if I don't have an ingredient. So today I decided I was going to make fish. And what I'm going to be making with it is coleslaw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make the dressing before I start the fish. The dressing is very, very simple. It just uses mayonnaise. I'm not making my own mayonnaise today. I'm just going to use what I have on hand, a little celery seed, some milk, and some sugar. Okay. Now, how I mix up my um, dressings. I have one of these little squishy balls with some metal. Give you a closer look and a cup. Just drop that in there after I put my mayonnaise in. And this actually has lines on it. So I'm gonna put about a cup of mayonnaise in here. Now this is what I start off with, depending on how much coleslaw mix I have will determine if I have to add more to it and go from there. Oh, I'm making a mess. Of course, it's my kitchen. I get to make lots of messes in it. And as I always say, a clean kitchen is not a kitchen in use. I've got a cup of mayonnaise there. Well, making a mess. And I'm going to start off with one fourth cup of sugar. and about four ounces of milk. And some celery seed. I just do a little sprinkle. That's what I put in. I drop my mixing ball in. Put the lid on. And I'm going to give it a shake here. Make sure that vent hole is closed or I'll be wearing it. Normally do this over the sink, but that's hard to do over the sink and on the camera. So, excuse me why I mix this up. Okay. Well, it's very thick. A little too thick. So I'm going to grab some more milk. Ta -da! <laughs> Get this open. And now that milk that I had poured in there did not have four ounces in it. It probably had about three. So now I added probably another three more ounces. And we're going to shake and get it going good. There we go. Sounds amazing. Mm, I'm just going to taste it here. It's nice and foamy. Mmm. That's perfect. So you got about six ounces of milk, about a cup of mayo, and a fourth cup of sugar, and a little bit of celery seed. Now, if you want to, um, I also even put this on cucumber salad, and I will put pepper in that, and a little bit of salt when I do it. And I might decide to do that still, but this is a nice dressing that's all around goodness. And there you go. So I'll be back in just a minute when I pour it over the coleslaw. So, hang on. Okay, so I've got some vegetable slaw, and yes, I bought it on sale. So we're gonna get it used up. I actually bought two of these packages, um, so I need to use up this other one. Both of them were on sale. 
It was really good the last time. Shake it up a little bit more. And I'm just going to pour this over. No, I like the dressing thick. And that was a... Oh, how big was this bag? Oh, it was a 10 ounce bag. So this is what I used to put dressing on a 10 ounce bag of coleslaw. Can't wait for cucumber season to come in and put some of this on cucumbers. Mm. So I'm gonna get this in the fridge and get this cold off. And we'll be back when we go to make our yummy, yummy, yummy fish. What do you think? Okay, we're back. Let's start the fish. So what I do is I take a foil lined baking sheet and I just spray it with some ham or some coating. And um, the fish that I'm using tonight is Pacific Whiting. Um, I started with the skin side up. Just lay this out like this. So I'm doing six pieces. It's just for my husband and I tonight. My daughter's not home. And I wanna do something really, really simple. Take a little bit of mustard. This makes a really, really good fish. My husband loves it. And I get to bake it and I don't fry it. I just do a squirt of mustard on each piece. I actually prefer to use brown mustard, but I finished up the rest of that the other day, so I'm going to just use plain. And then I take a little brush like this. Looks like a paintbrush, but it's not. It's a kitchen brush. And I just smear the mustard all over the fish. Uh, mustard's a good coating mix to even use on chicken. I don't know. It, you don't taste the mustard, so don't turn up your nose until you've actually tried it. Okay. Now once that's done, take a little bit of garlic powder. See? And I just sprinkle it all over it. And a little bit of pepper. And a little bit of salt. And last but not least, I'm going to use a little bit of dill. And I just sprinkle that over it. Um, a pinch here, a pinch there. I guess I ended up with about three, four pinches in here. A pinch, I guess, is how you do your fingers. Okay, so we got that side done. Now, we're going to flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm making a very big nest, as usual. And do a little bit of mustard. And brush it on. A little bit of garlic. I'm 
going to be baking this in my new wood cook stove. Um, so I can't really tell you the exact temperature it will be. I'm praying for 375. If I was doing it in my gas oven, it would be 375. Salt and pepper. And a little bit of dill. A couple pinches. Oops, that might be a little much. Mm. Okay. All right, so we're gonna get this in the oven and we're going to get this asparagus started. So follow me on this little journey and we're gonna be taking you to the old or the new wood cook stove. Well, here's my fish. I'm gonna be putting this in the oven right now. And it's about not quite 375, but it's good. I'm gonna put it in there and I'm gonna put my trusty fork. You, if you haven't seen me use this. Um, to keep the oven door closed. Okay, so, and now we're gonna start the asparagus. Okay, our fish is in the oven. It's about um, 350, probably closer to 365. It's not quite the 375 that I had wanted. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and start the asparagus. And yes, you're going to see me reaching. And I'm just going to use a little bit of olive oil to coat my cast iron skillet. And I'm also going to use some butter because there's everything, butter makes everything better, right? Now, normally I would use fresh garlic and I walked off when I went grocery shopping today and forgot to buy the fresh garlic. So we are using the garlic powder here, but not quite yet. I'm gonna get this melted. Okay, so I'm just going to move this up and around just to get the pan completely coated. It's very, very hot. Now with these, we just want to lightly saute them. And with asparagus, here you go, you just want to snap it so it takes off the very bottom piece because the bottom piece is usually pretty um, tough. Unfortunately, it does look like it's a waste, but um, you really don't want to eat the bottom piece because it is really tough. And you can actually do more at a time if you want to. I will put these down in with my worm bin or I will put them in the composter. As soon as I get chickens, yes, I will get chickens eventually, I am going to be feeding them to the chickens. Unless somebody out there tells me, and they're a chicken lady with experience or a chicken man with experience, that you cannot feed or you should not feed chickens, asparagus ends. Can you hear that sizzle every time I flip some um, water? It hits the burner a little bit and it's sizzling. Can't wait for my asparagus to start coming on. That's what's in my permanent garden. If you actually take a look at my, some of my summer videos, you can actually see what I have out there in the permanent garden. So I'm looking forward. I should definitely be able to get a lot this year. And with this, my favorite, a little bit of garlic. I'm gonna get a lid on this and let it cook. 
Okay, I'm gonna bring you down here to the oven, and yes, I have a flashlight I'm shining in there. Um, you can see this one down here that's about 375, and it's gonna be probably 15 to 20 minutes, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but I'm gonna be checking it at least at 15 minutes. And here's my nice fire going. Threw some logs in there, I got it going really good. It's a cooking. All right, um, you can probably see the cats in the background, but this is the fish, it's all done, very hot. Um, it took about 15, 20, 25 minutes, I didn't time it. But with fish, you want it to be flaky. You don't want it to be too dry. And I think this is absolutely perfect. It's gonna be amazing. Okay, now the asparagus. It's also very hot. And hello, people. <laughs> um, it is lightly sauteed. It is just a little bit limp. I will bring this to you so you can see it. It won't have much of a crunch, but it won't be real soggy either. So let me get my plate all set up and we'll do a taste test, see if it's as good as I remember. All right, so this is my plate and um, we're gonna take a test here, taste test. the fish first. Mm. Mm. As always, my husband's very lucky. He got a good cook. And my asparagus. Very, very good. And my coleslaw, one of our favorites. Mmm. Let me get a little drink here. <laughs> so, everything's very good. Another amazing dinner. So, remember, if you like my content, please like, share, and subscribe. That's how you help my channel. If you're sharing it, maybe some of you will be able to learn something. Maybe you have learned something. So, leave me a comment. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. I'll be talking to you soon. Yummy, yummy. Charlie B. signing out.